Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me today as we go through this Outdoors RV 26 KVS Mountain Series. All right, let's uh, go over how to get this thing hooked up to your tow vehicle first. It's gonna ride on a two and five sixteenths ball. Uh, very easy to get latched. Once you get the ball uh, backed underneath it, use your electric tongue jack to lower it down onto the ball. And then all you're gonna do is pick up on this and it's gonna slide forward. Make sure these ears right here fall into the cavity and that's gonna be a in your latch position. To release, just gonna be the opposite pick up and slide that back and that's gonna be released. So our safety chains here are gonna to need to cross and then they're gonna actually clip onto the receiver hitch of the tow vehicle. Now some vehicles have uh, chains, or I'm sorry, some trailers have chains that are really long. So they make this cool product from Fastway called a chain up. The chains just go through the uh, loops on it and then it slips down over the tow ball and sits right there and keeps your chains up off the ground, which in Texas it's illegal for them to drag the ground when you're towing it. So not a bad option for some trailers. Now these can store right up here on this uh, trailer. We've got the storage spot for them. A couple other things that are gonna hook up. One of them is gonna be our safety breakaway cable here, which needs to run its own path and be looped on a, um, hooked onto the receiver hitch with its own clip. Again, don't route it through the chains or anything like that. And um, a good way to, a good thing to replace this with is gonna be the uh, zip breakaway cable. It's coiled up uh, steel, so you're not, you're not getting like a plastic cable or anything, but it includes the key ring for connecting onto the clip. And then it comes with its own carabiner to clip it onto the receiver versus nothing on this one. And it keeps it up off the ground again so you don't get it caught in the jack or under the jack foot or doesn't drag the ground and get yanked out, anything like that. And last thing that we're gonna hook up to our tow vehicle is gonna be our seven way plug here. It's gonna run all your lights, turn signals, brake lights, and electric brakes on the trailer if your tow vehicle is equipped with a brake controller. Now, a lot of vehicles today are equipped with factory installed brake controls from the vehicle manufacturer. If not, there's a couple of different options. Uh, Kurt has a wireless option now that just uh, sets up and pairs with your uh, smart, smartphone via Bluetooth and you can control all the settings from there. And then there's your old and trusty dash mount style that goes usually down by your knees and has a digital display on it and it hard, what we call hard wires in and mounts inside the vehicle. All right, moving up from there, we're gonna have your electric tongue jack here. Um, pretty simple up and down operation. And then we've got a service light on it as well for nighttime operation. Now, if this does fail on the 12 volt side, there is a manual crank operation. You're just gonna take this cap off the top and down inside you will find a little drive nut for cranking this manually. One other thing that I did forget to mention, this little blue cap here is designed to store on top of your plug. And then this can actually hang right here. Whole idea behind this thing is to get everything up off the ground, keep it out of the mud and keep it clean. All right, so just behind our electric tongue jack is gonna be our dual propane cylinder setup. Now to get into here for normal operation, you're just gonna loosen up these little uh, thumb nuts. You tip the, tip the bolt backwards and then you can open up. Inside you will find two 30 pound propane cylinders. Uh, for basic operation, all you're gonna be doing is turning the service valves on and off on the cylinders. And then you can also reach the changeover valve in here if you need to, to change things over in here as well. Now you will have to remove this cover if you are going to actually remove the cylinders uh, for getting them refilled. Uh, these cylinders cannot be exchanged due to the size of them, so they do have to be refilled. Um, all you're gonna do is lift this cover straight up and off. And here we have our cylinders. Now to remove these from the trailer, it's very, very easy. All you're gonna do is loosen up this wing nut Whichever cylinder needs to be removed, make sure your service valve is closed, which is all the way to the right, open is left, so all the way to the right. Go ahead and remove your service line from it and lift up your crossbar. And then we can tip our cylinder out and remove it from the trailer. Now you can take it to a refill station, get it refilled. 
Now just remember anytime you're transporting a propane cylinder of this style, it does need to be in the upright position for safety purposes. Um, once you get back to your trailer to put it back on, it's just gonna be the opposite. You're just gonna pick it back up, set it on that rack, lift your T-bar up or your crossbar, get everything repositioned here. We're gonna snug the wing nut back down. And this doesn't need to be over tight. We're just trying to keep the cylinders in place. Go ahead and put your service hose back on. And now if you need to, you can go ahead and reopen that uh, service valve before you put your cover back on. Now this trailer is also equipped with an auto changeover regulator. So what that means is this lever right here is used to choose which is your main supply tank. Just by moving this, if it's pointed this way, it's this cylinder pointed to the other side, it's the other cylinder. Now what will happen here is if you turn on both service valves and leave them on and you're using propane, it's gonna automatically deplete your regular supply tank first and then it's gonna automatically start drawing from the other tank, uh, which is great because you get a lot of propane all at one time. The bad thing is, is you don't know how much you have left and you don't know when one cylinder is empty. So what we recommend doing is keeping one cylinder turned on one cylinder turned off and use and manually using the selector switch here to choose which cylinder we're using. So once this one goes empty, we're gonna close our service valve here. We're gonna flip our uh, selector switch to the other cylinder, turn it on and keep on going. Now we know that this one is empty and we can take it and go get it refilled. When you're done under here, you're just gonna slide your cover back on and that's that. Now behind your propane cylinders, you're gonna find your batteries. Now this trailer is equipped with two uh, deep cycle RV marine batteries and um, they are, they are uh, not maintenance free, which means you need to pop the caps off and check the water level in them periodically. And you're gonna use distilled water to top them up. Now, if you need to disconnect the cables for any reason, I recommend taking a picture before you disconnect them. As you can see, there's multiple different wire colors down there and you don't wanna get them mixed up. Uh, one other thing that's up on the tongue of the trailer here is gonna be our toy lock that's over here on the side. Uh, this is great for securing um, anything that you're gonna pull out and maybe have sitting around the trailer. Um, it's just on a retractable cable um, with a lock. So this can be, if you're gonna run on, have a generator or something, you can pull this out, loop it through your generators, lock it back and secure your generators. It can be used on bicycles, it can be used on dirt bikes just about anything that you can reach that cable around and lock back, you can secure with it. We're on the off door side here. Um, we've got a couple of stickers right up here at the front of the trailer by the baggage door. Uh, we're gonna find some weights on here, tire information, tire pressure, tire size. Uh, read all this stuff, know what it means. If you have any questions about it, don't hesitate to ask us. We do recommend running what the manufacturer says to run at. Um, our big front pass through storage here. We do have a, uh, a light inside the compartment here, it just has a switch, it's on the front wall in here uh, to turn it on and off. And the baggage doors on this trailer use uh, slam latches. So literally you just slam it and it latches shut and then it's got a key lock on it. Held open with a magnet, uh, magnet catch here. So you just push it up to the magnet, it's gonna hold it open. All right, moving on down here, we've got a service light. So this service light is for when you are dumping your tanks, just has a switch on the bottom side of it there. Uh, these two ports right here are lock with this lever. So to the left is locked, to the right is unlocked, and then you can open them up. Now this is to give you access to your gate valves for your uh, dump tanks. So the front valve, is gonna be our gray water or our uh, sink and shower water. So this, is, this one here is gonna be for the sink and the bathroom and the shower, basically. Uh, the black one on uh, here is gonna be for the toilet. The way it's gonna work, you're gonna hook your uh, sewer hose up to the fitting here, run it off to the dump. You can leave your gray one open at all times whenever you're using the water pretty regularly or if you're gonna be camping for a while, black needs to stay closed until the tank's full or until you're ready to break camp, um, and then you're gonna dump it. Now we always recommend if you fill the gray up, we dump our black first, follow it with the gray. So a good option for a sewer hose here is gonna be the uh, Valterra Silverback. Um, 
two 10 foot sections. The cool things to look for are gonna be your clear elbow or translucent elbow. Um, this is designed to fit multiple size uh, sewer drains and things like that. It's got everything you need in the box. It's got drip caps to keep things from running out of the tank when it's stored up in your trailer and everything as well. So uh, just, a, just a sewer hose to look at there. Um, you know, pliable material. They make different types of materials, but don't cheap out on a sewer hose when you buy one. The last thing you want it to do is leak or blow out on you whenever you're dumping your tank. This trailer is also equipped with a sandy flush or a black tank flush. So you're gonna wanna get a dedicated black gray water hose or um, a flush hose that you're not using for fresh water purposes. You're gonna hook it up here, hook it up to the hose bib, have your black valve completely open with your sewer hose hooked up over to the sewer drain, and you're just gonna let that thing run for about five to 10 minutes, and that's gonna help flush that tank out. When you're done, disconnect everything, close everything, you're ready to go. So we've got two coax connections here on the side. One's gonna be for park cable, the other one's gonna be for satellite. And we've also got your 30 amp, uh, 125, uh, 120 volt connection. So let me show you how this hooks up. We've got three prongs in here. One's kind of an L shape. Saw the trailer's gonna have the same. I'm just gonna match those up, push that on, give it a little twist. And then we're gonna use the uh, plastic collar here to lock it down, get a nice, good, tight connection. We've got a little blue light here on the lid that shows us, hey, yeah, we've actually got power here too. Um, so these are good. You wanna make sure you get a good snug connection here so you don't have this thing getting loose on you and causing any extra heat that doesn't need to be produced or arcing or anything like that. Now there are some adapters on the market that you can adapt down to like a 15 amp or adapt up to a 15, 50 amp. Um, these are great, but just remember you're reducing your power availability here or at least the amperage that you can use because you're stepping down to a 15 amp uh, basically breakered circuit here. Um, so you're probably not gonna be able to do everything that you would expect to do here. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that we do highly recommend some type of surge protection for your trailer. Uh, trailers are not cheap, the appliances are not cheap, and surges and other electrical issues can cause problems and cost you money in the long run, so we do recommend a good surge protector. Uh, one thing to really look for is gonna be the automatic shutoff feature. So right underneath our power cord area on the side of the trailer, once we look up underneath, we're gonna see this white handle here. That's gonna be our freshwater tank uh, drain or dump. Uh, so if we're gonna to wanna to drain off our freshwater tank, we're gonna pull that lever right there. Now all trailer manufacturers have um, lug torque requirements, tire, repre tire pressure requirements and everything like that. So Outdoors has put their warning sticker on here about what they recommend, and they recommend retorquing at 10, 25, and 50 miles. And that's any time the wheels have been removed for service or your first trip. Uh, we here at Princess Craft also recommend retorquing or checking the torque before you hit the road for any trip, just to make sure everything is good and tight as it should be. Now this trailer is equipped with the Dexter never adjust axles, which means the brakes sh should never need to be adjusted on the trailer. They do it all on their own automatically. Doesn't mean they won't need to be serviced. They just shouldn't need to be adjusted. So we've already got this lower cover removed here for the refrigerator lower vent. Uh, just to show you some stuff. Uh, basically, you know, your cords plugged in over here for the uh, 110 operation. This is all of your control board here. There may be some fuses in there that you might need to check if you're working um, over the phone with somebody trying to troubleshoot something. They may ask you to check some things. It's good to know where some stuff is. Uh, you can get in here and inspect in here for bugs or anything that may be building nests that may cause burner operation. And then we've also got a manual shutoff uh, on the gas valve here, which will be this little knob right here. Um, right now we're in normal flow mode. You can see the line running in line with the gas line. If we're gonna shut it off, you just turn it the other way and our line's gonna be uh, perpendicular to the gas line. Uh, you should never need to do that unless somehow this electronically fails open and you don't wanna shut the gas off to the rest of the trailer. Now these have um, louvers in them. This thing's gonna fit on and snap on kind of, if you will. These clips kind of pop in, but when they get, once you get it all the way on, you do want to lock these, so you do have to turn them. A uh, coin or a key can be really helpful here. Some of these get pretty tight, especially in the winter. 
um, you'll want to make sure they're good and locked. Otherwise, this thing can blow off and travel. Now, in Texas, we have a big issue with dirt daubers. Uh, so we recommend putting insect screens on that will help keep the dirt daubers from getting in through the louvers on here. Uh, these don't affect the operation or anything like that. They're gonna keep the bugs out and keep uh, money in your pocket by keeping the insects out of your uh, gas appliances. Now on the 26 KVS, this is gonna have another dump, which is gonna be separate from the uh, forward gray and black. It's gonna be a galley dump, which is gonna be for the kitchen only. And it's gonna be back here just behind the slide. It's gonna be where you're gonna hook up your sewer hose and then the pull valve or the T-handle is right up here next to it. So right here is gonna be your galley dump handle. So there's a couple ways you can do this trailer. They make a Y adapter that you can run in between and hook up sewer hoses from the front and the rear to the Y and then a single hose over to the dump. Or you can just have a single sewer hose that you move from location to location as needed. We've got our slide out here. So let's talk about slide maintenance real quick. Two products, slide out lubricant, going to be good for our slide tracks. So this one's equipped with uh, tracks on the side of the trailer. Some slides have tracks underneath. You can use the same products for that. Uh, you want to make sure all the heavy debris is off of them. Put a little lube on each track, run the slide in and out, you're done there. The other product's going to be your rubber seal conditioner. That's going to go on the rubber seals that go all the way around the slide, top, bottom, and sides. Uh, so you may need a ladder to get all the way up on the sides and across the roof. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you want to do to keep your slide in tip-top operation and also to keep, uh, keep the weather seals pliable and in good condition as well to keep them uh, so they keep water out of the trailer for you. All right, so on the back of the 26 KVS, we've actually got some stuff back here. Uh, this comes with a 10 gallon gas electric water heater. Um, so a couple things here, dead center at the bottom, you're gonna find your anode rod or drain plug. Um, or excuse me, that should be anode rod and drain plug. So this will need to be replaced as the anode starts to deteriorate. That is typical, that is completely normal. Uh, so we do recommend pulling that thing out when you're gonna have the trailer put up for a while to allow all the water to drain out so it doesn't get uh, stinky and also gives you a good chance to rinse out the water heater and inspect your anode rod to see if it needs to be replaced. Now this little switch down here in the bottom left corner is gonna be for the 110 heating element operation. So if you're gonna to wanna to run the 110 heating element, this does need to be in the on position. Now you can inspect these areas here for um, bugs. Make sure there's no insects building nests. Even a spider web can get in here and interrupt the flow of propane so this thing won't ignite properly on gas. Now you can run this in gas or electric or both for faster recovery. Uh, before you fire it up in any mode, always make sure there's water in it. The quickest and easiest way I like to do it is with the pop-off valve right here at the top. You just open that up. If water comes out, it's full. Now again, we talk about dirt daubers and building nests. They do make screens for water heaters as well. So we do recommend putting bug screens there as well. Now this, has a, this one has a completely removable door. So it's gonna sit down on these two little pins down here at the bottom. The door's got two holes that are gonna fit right on top of those pins. And then we're gonna use this little D-loop, line it up with the door here, give it a little pull. It's got a spring on it, turn it, and then fold it over and that's that. Okay, outside shower connection here, hot and cold water, pretty straightforward uh, for that. We do have a uh, flow control button on the shower head. One way is gonna be full on spray, the other way is gonna be uh, basically a dribble. Now to store this thing, you do have to just kind of wrap it around the mixer and get it all to store inside the compartment there. Now this one's gonna be secured, uh, closed with a thumb latch. So it just turns and that's that. <coughs> mm. <coughs> Yummy, bugs. All right, now this connection here is gonna be your city water connection. This is where you're gonna hook up with a water hose and a water pressure regulator to the trailer and provide water to the rest of the trailer. Uh, four inch square bumper here does have removable end caps that you can take out and you can store your sewer hose in here. My caution that I always give on uh, bumper storage, I love them, 
Just be cautious, it is metal. There could be sharp edges on the inside that could do damage to your sewer hose. So just be careful when you're putting your sewer hose in or pulling it out of the storage here. Um, do have a rear hitch on the bumper here. Outdoors RV has said the max hitch capacity is 250 pounds for this. So you could put a bike rack in it or a luggage rack and put a little bit of stuff on it. Uh, this storage compartment that's up here uh, right above the spare tire is actually gonna be for, you can use it just for storage, but it also gives you a good place to put a trash can. Uh, you can put your trash can here and there's actually a pop out in the countertop that comes right down into this compartment. Um, I don't know if you can see that there. And you can actually uh, drop your trash and get it right from out here so you never have to mess with it technically inside the trailer. Uh, again, this is gonna be slam latches with a key lock. Now we've got your spare tire mounted up here. Um, if you do need to ever change a flat on your trailer, you wanna make sure you jack up on the frame of the trailer, not the axle. If you can't get to the frame and you have to go on the axle, we do recommend uh, getting as close to the wheel as possible uh, so we don't bend the axle. We don't wanna be out in the middle of the axle or something like that. There are also devices on the market. Um, I think it's called Trailer Aid that you can drive up onto and on a tandem axle trailer and will actually lift one axle off the ground and then you don't have to do any jacking um, of the trailer that actually lifts it up and you can change the flat. Uh, we've got your uh, roof access ladder here. Good thing to do is if you never go up on the roof, you need to do it at least every 90 days. Get up there and inspect your seals and sealants of everything that goes through the roof all the way around the trailer and make sure there's nothing going on. If you can't do it, find somebody that can, and at least once a year, get your trailer into a service department and have them go all over it and make sure you're not gonna have any water problems. The 26 KVS is a double entry trailer, so this is gonna work same for the front door, so I'll just do this one, but it works exactly the same for the other door. For your step storage, you're gonna fold the bottom step over the middle step, and then we're gonna put our hand under the middle step and we're just gonna pick up and this is gonna fold right into uh, the cavity for storage. That's it for travel. Now to pull them for use, it says pull here to open. You're just gonna grab that bar, pull straight out, stops, and then flip your bottom step down and now your steps are ready for use. Now your grab handles here, uh, the rear door on this trailer has a fold away grab handle. Obviously can't go this way back over the leg, so it does have to go over the door. You're just gonna pick up on it, spring loaded, and push it in over the door like that. All right. Let's keep moving down the side of the trailer here. So when you are camping, trailers are designed to be leveled. So for op normal operation, draining, everything that the manufacturer has built the trailer is designed on level. So the trailer does need to be leveled. Camco has come out with a product called the Curve Leveler. This has been really easy to use for leveling. You drive up on them with using the tow vehicle to pull the trailer up onto them and then they chalk with another one so it's been a really good product. Our customers have been really happy with them um, with no negative feedback. So this uh, little port here on the side is gonna be our fresh water tank fill. So to fill it up, you're just gonna take the cap off, put your water hose in there, and you're gonna turn the water on and allow that to fill. Now you can fill this tank all the way up until the water gushes out at you. That's gonna be a completely full tank. The other way to monitor it is to use the monitor panel on the inside of the trailer. When it gets to the level that you want, you just turn the water off and remove the hose and you're good to go. We do have an exterior 110 outlet here. And right here underneath the trailer, I'm gonna show you a couple of hoses that are gonna be right here. These are gonna be your low point drain hoses. So whenever you drain the trailer from water or get it ready for winterization, I'll show you where the valves are, but that's where all that water is gonna drain out at. That's gonna bring us to our uh, Suburban Furnace exhaust here. Uh, this is gonna get hot anytime you're running your furnace. Um, so watch out for little fingers, don't cover it, um, unless you're gonna be putting an insect screen over it, but just be cautious of that, because it does get hot. Again, they do make an insect screen that goes over this one as well. If you do any of them, I always recommend the furnace over the rest of them if you're kinda wishy-washy on it, because this one's gonna be the most expensive to repair 
if a dirt dauber gets in there and builds a nest. We've seen them deep enough in a furnace that you have to replace the whole furnace. We can't get the nest out. So the other side of our pass-through storage here has a couple things stored in it. First off is gonna be our little crank handle here. So this little crank handle is gonna be for the tongue jack. So that's gonna be the crank handle for the tongue jack if it fails on the uh, 12 volt side. Uh, we're also gonna have our uh, crank jack for our uh, stabilizers, our manual backup there for our stabilizer jacks. Um, got some storage loops up here for storing things. Nice big giant pass through. On the front of the wall here is where we're gonna find some switches. Um, we're gonna find our battery disconnect switch. So in storage or non-use time, we're just gonna turn this to the off position. Um, if we're using the trailer, it needs to be in the on position. Um, this switch right here is gonna be for a service light on the front of the trailer by the batteries. And then we're gonna have our uh, stabilizer jack switches right here. Extend, retract. Um, extend is to lower them to the ground. Retract is to bring them back up to the trailer. Now remember, stabilizers are just for stabilizing the trailer after it's been leveled. They are not used for lifting or leveling of any type on this trailer. And we're also equipped with a uh, solar ready port here on the side. Allows you to purchase a portable solar panel that can plug into the port there. And you can then position that panel out, collect some sun and help recharge your batteries. This is a great option if you like to uh, dry camp or boondock. Um, it's gonna help keep your 12 volt batteries charged up and allow 12 volt operation of the trailer. Now again, this uh, baggage door here is equipped with a slam latch and uh, keyed lock. All right guys, I think I've got everything covered on the exterior of this 26 KVS. Let's go check out the inside. All right guys, coming inside the door of the 26 KVS here to the right, we're gonna find a bunch of switches. Um, first, we're going to have our monitor panel, which is going to allow us to check uh, battery and tank levels. You can see we're equipped with battery, fresh, black, gray one, and gray two. Um, then we've got our water pump switch. So if we're dry camping, uh, we're going to flip that water pump switch on. That's going to allow us to pull water from the fresh water tank and provide pressure to the water system. Uh, this can also be used on the side of the road or at a uh, truck stop or something like that if you want to get inside the trailer and have access to water. Then we're gonna have two water heater switches, um, LP gas and electric. Now, so on the electric side, remember there's also a switch outside on the water heater. If this one's turned on and that one's turned off, it still doesn't work. That one has to be on and this one has to be on in order for the electric side of the water heater to work. Um, LP gas side, all you're gonna do is flip it on. It's gonna go into auto ignition. It's gonna do its thing, cycle on and off. And again, remember you can run both at the same time for faster recovery. Um, the two next to that, uh, the first switch here is gonna be for your uh, patio light. And then uh, the next switch, this one right here, is gonna be for your cabin lights. Um, every single ceiling light in the main area of the trailer here. Uh, and then we've got our slide room switch and our awning switch. So the slide room in, out, so in is bringing the slide in, out is extending it out for use. Um, with the slide system that is equipped on this trailer, we don't recommend doing short cycles on the slide. If you're gonna operate it, run it all the way out or all the way in, whichever it needs to be to help keep all the motors and gears and everything in time. Uh, for the awning, extend, retract. Extend is away from the trailer. Retract is bring it back to the trailer. Just make sure you are completely retracted before you hit the road for travel. Um, now behind our uh, recliner over here, we do have your fire extinguisher. Uh, you would just pull this pin right here and that would allow you to discharge it. But for normal practices, uh, just be pushing that green button down periodically, check it, make sure it pops back up. That's gonna ensure that the fire extinguisher still has pressure in it. Now to the left coming in the door, we're gonna find a 110 outlet that can be used for the countertop for putting up a coffee pot or something like that. But we're also gonna have our roof vent fan uh, control for our max air fan that is over the um, cooking area. So this thing is all remote controlled, so you don't have to reach up here um, to open and close it or anything unless it fails. You do have a manual crank knob for backup. But for normal operation, you're gonna do it from right here. You're just gonna push the power button, turn that on. Lid's gonna open up automatically. Then you can cycle through different speeds, um, whether you want the, um, and it's only gonna pull air out. Now you can keep the vent open and just have the fan off. 
but totally up to you how you want that to work. And you just have to cycle through all four speeds and then it will, uh, you can do that. And if you want to turn it off, you're just going to push fan off and the lid's going to close. Uh, next to that, we're going to find our microwave, regular old turntable uh, turn style microwave. Put your stuff in it, set your time, let it go. Big storage cabinet underneath. Now, um, on our windows in this trailer, we've got a couple of different styles. Some are sliding up and down, some are sliding sideways. So let me show you how these work. Um, so the two on the sides of the, of the galley or the kitchen here uh, have slide levers here, and then you can open them up. And the screens can also slide as well if you want the screens to slide. To close them down, you're just going to push the levers in and slide it down. Make sure you get them closed down all the way. So once you pull them down, they're going to give you some privacy. They're going to be uh, light blocking. Uh, pretty good, pretty good little projector style shades here to uh, get them to go back up. You're just going to give them kind of a quick little tug. They're going to kind of go back up on a spring. Now that's going to go for pretty much all of the shades in here. There are a couple of different ones that are not like this. I'll show you how those work. Um, but all back here, they are that style. We do have some storage in the corner over here. Uh, this little access right here is going to be for that uh, garbage can that you can put down into the uh, outside storage area there. Or you can just put something there that you may want to access from the inside of the trailer. Um, now these windows back here use a different latch. They actually flip out and then slide. So this is going to be your lock mechanism here. Across the back of your um, cooktop here, uh, we do have a knife rack to where you can slide some knives into those slots there and store. Now in your three burner cooktop here, to open up the glass top, we're going to open up the front piece first. We're going to fold it over the back piece, and then we're going to pick up the second piece and we're going to fold it back. Now it's going to stay up once it gets to that rear position. Now to get this thing to light, you're just going to turn this to light and you're going to use the sparker here to get it to light. Do your cooking, and we always recommend that you let your burners cool off before you close your glass cooktop cover so you don't cause any damage to the cover. So that's going to be your uh, pilot light that you're going to have to light up there. Um, you're going to take your knob here. So it says pilot. You're going to push and hold the knob in. Then you're going to use your stick lighter and light the pilot inside the oven, which is going to be that back in there. Once you get a flame established, Hold the knob in for about another five to 10 seconds until it's good and then set your temperature, do your baking, and when you're done, turn it off. And we do have a big pull-out storage drawer underneath. We've got storage underneath your sink on both sides. And we've got a row of drawers here uh, as well. Now your sink comes with um, fillers so you can get more countertop space if you need it. Take them out for use. It's also got a rack that sits in the bottom for uh, drainage. And we've got your uh, nice pull down spout uh, spray head here that can be changed between a steady stream or kind of a shower stream. And your water control is going to be pulling the uh, stem out towards you for water flow. And then left and right, uh, left is going to be hot um, and right will be cold for your water temperature mixing. Um, on the side of the galley here, we've got another 110 outlet, and down at the floor, you're going to find your LPCO alarm. Uh, if you've got an LP gas leak or CO um, leaking into the trailer or anything like that, that alarm is going to go off and tell you to vacate the trailer, basically. Over, the, uh, over that, we're going to find our smoke alarm up here on the roof. Inside, you'll find a 9-volt battery. Uh, check your smoke alarm periodically. Make sure it's working um, and replace it as needed. And that's going to bring us to our Norcold refrigerator. So to get into the refrigerator, it's just a little kind of lever. If you just grab it, it's pretty natural for that to release the uh, latch mechanism and open up. And there's our freezer. Now for the controls on this, we've got three buttons. Um, first one's going to be our power button. So just push the button. The green light's going to come on. It's going to show you the power mode that it's selected right now and our temperature setting. Now we can use the mode button here and select through cycles. Um, 
So we've got auto mode, so the A is on, and in the auto mode, it's gonna show you which mode it's selected, whether it's electric or gas. So the little flame would be lit up if we were running on gas right now. Now auto mode means it's gonna automatically select whichever source is most reliable. So if you're at your campground, you're plugged into 110, everything's going good, it's working, and the power goes out. As long as you have good 12 volt battery on board and you've got propane, this is gonna automatically switch over to LP gas, light up the flame, and keep everything cold inside. Now you can do uh, manual electric, manual gas, um, and then it goes back to auto mode. So the other button on here is gonna be our temperature setting. We've got one through five on it for temperature. So the more kind of snowflakes there, the colder it gets. Now these refrigerators do take anywhere from 12 to 24 hours to completely cool. So we do recommend prepping them ahead of time. And we also recommend do not overpack them. And if you can put stuff in them that's already chilled, that will help with your operation of the refrigerator. All right, moving into our dinette area here. Um, overhead's gonna be our lighting here with a switch on the base of it that you just push to turn the light on and off. We do have storage drawers on each side of the dinette underneath the benches. And our dinette makes into an alternate bed. So let me show you how to do that. First, we're gonna pop our cushions up. Take your table off of the posts. Now you can set this aside because you're probably gonna need more hands unless somebody's helping you with this. Take your posts up. Now you can set these on the floor um, or you can put them in the under bench storage so you can access these. They've got the uh, finger pulls uh, cut out into the, uh, the bases here. Uh, while I have the table out of the way, let me go ahead and show you that there is a 110 outlet under here uh, that you can plug into for laptop use or anything like that. So once you get all that out of the way, we're going to take our table and it's going to sit right down onto these slats on the side. Like that. And then we're going to set our cushions down flat across to make our extra bed. Like that. So putting it back up into a table is going to be just the opposite. We're gonna pop our cushions back up. Take our table out of the way. Take your posts and put them back into the floor bases. And then we're gonna take our tabletop and we're going to attempt to set it back down on those posts. Like that. Uh, once you get there, we're just gonna put your cushions back down flat like they belong. There we go. All right, now the shades in our dinette and our living room are a little different. It's gonna have the uh, uh, what we would call a uh, day-night shade or an accordion shade here uh, that you pull down. These do a good job of blocking light as well um, and they are also privacy. Nobody's going to be able to see through them. So they do a good job as well um, at nighttime. Now these are uh, have to have good tension on these strings that run down each side. So try not to stretch those out um, whenever you are doing that. Just over our slide here, we're gonna have a skylight with a shade on it again. So this can be open and closed for temperature and uh, light control. On the uh, wall here, we've got our uh, Jensen TV. It's a pretty good size. So it is secured right now for travel. So for use, you're gonna remove this bungee cord. And now this can be swung away from the wall. There is a little pull chain back here and you can actually pull this thing out and swing it away. Uh, so you can kind of angle it if you're sitting over here in the recliners or something like that. Uh, but there are some connections back here. So let's talk about these real quick. So we do have um, your booster right here, your antenna booster, uh, which is also gonna be for uh, your cable hookup or your satellite hookup. If you're gonna be hooked up to exterior cable, you're gonna want to have the booster light off. That'll allow the signal to pass through. Um, if you're gonna be using satellite, the input's actually gonna be here. We've also got a uh, 110 outlet out here, and then we've also got a 12 volt accessory port and two USB charge ports on back here. Um, one important note about your TV, 
you want it latched and make sure you secure it with your bungee strap here if this thing swings out and gets caught behind the slide and you run the slide out you're going to end up with a broke slide definitely a broke tv possibly a broke slide same with uh coming in if you're not paying attention it's going to catch that tv and do some damage so over the tv we've got some storage under the tv we've got some storage and we've got your uh, Furion radio over here, which is also going to be your DVD player. Uh, it's got Bluetooth features, so you can connect and play music through it to your uh, from your phone. Uh, pretty much everything that you would expect from kind of an entertainment center, if you will, in a trailer. Um, moving on around, we do have a bunch more storage cabinets here. This thing's just loaded with storage. Uh, we've got a power distribution panel down here. It's going to have our 110 breakers and 12 volt fuses in it. Uh, I do recommend keeping some 12 volt fuses on hand with you uh, in case you do accidentally blow a fuse somehow. Uh, that way you can pop it in and keep going. Uh, just over here um, ab above the recliners, we will find your uh, Coleman Mach thermostat control for the furnace and the air conditioner. Uh, really easy operation here. We just have your temperature slide, which is going to be here. Uh, fan setting over here, we always recommend auto high. If you want to just run the fan, you can kick it on to, to high over there. But re other than that, we do recommend auto. And then over here, you'll just select what mode you want, whether you want heat, fan, off, or cool. And that's what system is going to operate. So if you just want fan, just the blower is going to come on. If you want air conditioner, the compressor will come on and get everything cold. If you want heat, furnace is going to come on. Um, more storage in this thing for you here just loaded with storage uh, which will bring us to our air conditioner overhead uh, we do have so this trailer is ducted if you're kind of hanging out in here you can also open up these flaps here uh, which will allow more air out into the main cabin and restrict air up to the bedroom of the trailer um, there's also filters on the side of this thing that do need to be serviced you just pop this down right here and that's going to be your filter. You can fish that out of there. Try not to damage it or put any holes in it. You can rinse that and reuse it. Just make sure it's dry before you put it back in. On your recliners here, um, easy operation. Got the uh, pull lever here on the side. It's going to let your foot out there for you. And to put them away, you're just going to push them down and snap them in just like any recliner. Your recliners here can be secured with travel using the provided straps. They just anchor to the floor with a little clip. Clip right down to the loop that's on the floor down there. As you can see down there, not really. And then they're going to snap over here on the other side to the receiver. And then all you have to do is snug up that strap. And that's going to kind of keep these things from bouncing around as you're traveling down the road. Um, it's not a bad idea to secure them just to make sure they don't move. Um, totally optional and I'm going to be up to you though if you want to do that. So over your recliners you do have a couple lights here that can be turned on and off with the switches on them um, if you want there. So let's move back here to the bathroom. Uh, before we get in here, so this room can be isolated with this pocket door. Works just like this and just make sure it's secured before you hit the road like I said. All right, moving on in here, um, just coming around the corner, we do have a 110 outlet here. We've got a GFCI on the other side of the sink with a uh, trip reset button on it. If it's tripped, that red light's gonna be on. That means that something's been plugged into it um, that has caused it to trip, and you're gonna have some 110 operation not working there and probably somewhere else, as most outlets run through the GFIs uh, somewhere in the chain. Uh, a couple of other switches that we've got here are um, on off switch here is just for our uh, light. They've also put another water pump switch in here uh, so you don't have to walk all the way to the front of the trailer if you need access to water in here. You can just flip the switch on here. That little red light's going to come on and tell you that the pump's on and you'll get some water in here. Again, we've got another Max Air fan wall mounted remote control for the uh, Max fan that's in here. Uh, pretty standard uh, bathroom faucet there, just hot and cold mixers. Got our toilet paper holder right over here. 
Underneath the sink is a good storage area. This does have a P-trap down here, so be cautious when you're putting stuff down there uh, that you don't knock it loose or break it. And it's a good idea to not just, you know, check those fittings every now and then and make sure they're still tight. This grate right here is gonna be our furnace fresh air return, so don't block that off anytime you're running the furnace. Uh, another little storage compartment, and then this down here is gonna be those low point drains that I was talking about. Just put your finger and pull this out. It's just kind of Velcroed on there, and inside you'll find your two uh, drain levers. So you just open those up, and that's gonna drain the fresh water system. All right, so our toilet in this trailer uh, it's going to be a foot flush toilet. So in order to get water into the bowl, we're just going to push the foot lever down about halfway. That's going to fill the bowl up with water. And then we can use the restroom. Uh, when we're done, we're going to push it all the way down. That's going to open up the ball valve and allow everything to drain down into the black tank. Now, you're going to want to make sure you're using plenty of water here. Use RV toilet tissue. Um, and you want to make sure you're using some type of black tank treatment. Um, Possins have become really popular. You throw it right down the toilet, add about a gallon of water, and it's good to go. Uh, waste digester and an um, odor controller for you here. Uh, these do a good job. And we also recommend like kind of an aggressive quarterly tank treatment. Uh, tank Blaster from Thetford is also a good product for that. Uh, there's some others on the market. Commando is a good one too. Uh, it's kind of more of an aggressive cleaner. You pour it down the uh, toilet, fill the tank up completely, let it sit for about 24 hours, and then drain it out. Just make sure you take good care of your tanks um, because it can get expensive to repair if you get a clog. All right, our shower over here has got a uh, sliding door on it that's held closed with a magnet. There's a magnet strip here and on the wall. I'm just going to pull that all the way over. Um, now this rubber does have a little bit of tension to it, so you may have to give it a little bit of a tug to kind of get some stretch in it until it gets good and broken in to get that magnet to hold. Um, inside we're going to find your standard style uh, shower head with a flow control lever on it again. Uh, one way is full on, the other way is just pretty much a dribble, hot and cold mixing. Coming into the bedroom, we're going to find another pocket door here so you can completely isolate the uh, bathroom. Again, it's going to have a travel strap that just snaps and it's going to slot open and, uh, slide open and close. And again, make sure that you do get it secured for travel or this door will end up probably broken after going down the road. So coming right into the bedroom here to the right, if we're facing the front of the trailer, we're going to find our light switch for our two overhead lights. And uh, a couple of features that we've got going in uh, here underneath our um, on our bedsides we're going to find 110 outlets and we're going to find um, USB charge ports. Lots of storage in here. Our light that's over the bed is going to be a three-way switch. We can run one light, both lights, or no lights. And this trailer is also prepped for uh, solar. So that sticker right there kind of indicates where the solar wires are supposed to come down to and where you would put your charge controller. Now over here, over your fire exit window for the bedroom is where you're going to find your alternate TV mounting location. Uh, they've already got a backer built into this wall basically to attach a TV mount to. And overhead is where all your connections will be for running said TV. Uh, now this fire exit window here is going to operate just a little bit different. Um, you do have to remove the screen on this one to gain access to the other lever. This slide, this screen does not slide, so it does actually have to be removed. But all you're going to do is flip the lever out, and then that whole window will swing out. So back here in the bedroom, we've got a carbon monoxide alarm, 9-volt uh, operated. Again, make sure you're testing this thing periodically and replacing batteries as needed. Um, so this bedroom is equipped with a max fan as well, uh, except this one's gonna have a removable remote control that you can control. It does kind of have to be aimed at the fan for things to operate. Um, but you push the power button, it's gonna open up the lid and it's gonna turn the fan on. And then you've got uh, fan speed controls here uh, that change the uh, temp set that you can see up there in the top that you're trying to achieve. So you can go colder and warmer. Uh, if you use the fan buttons, you're actually gonna be using the fan speed percentage. And then we also can open and close the lid from here. And we can also reverse fan operation. So this fan can pull air in or pull air out. 
and then you can just push the power button and turn everything off it's going to close down so i love these vents they do a good job they're 900 cubic feet per minute they move a ton of air and they've already got a rain guard built onto them so they can stay open even when it's raining outside and storage all that stuff and you're not gonna have to worry about stuff getting into them um underneath the bed we do have some storage as well So uh, outdoors is uh, providing a, kind of a, an extended stay type hookup here that will allow you to hook up to other propane accessories uh, that are kind of a reach. Um, they're using this for hooking up to like a portable grill or something like that that may run on propane. You can use that. Um, they're going to provide you with the, uh, the vent insulator cushion, which goes right up in your vents here. Um, you can face the silver side up in the summertime. It's going to help reflect heat out. Uh, they just push up in there like that and they stay there. And then to pull them down from you, you should just pull them out. These are great. I love them. Uh, one last storage drawer that's going to be under the bed in here is going to be right here. Right outside the door is easy access to it. A uh, good size storage drawer for you there. All right, guys. That should cover everything on the Outdoors RV 26 KVS Mountain Series. But if I have missed anything, don't hesitate to give us a call, email us, text us, whatever works for you. Just reach out to us. And again, this is Cody with Princess Craft RV.